the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is born. Today we gather together on this beautiful Christmas morning to celebrate an event that happened over 2,000 years ago. And in our modern day, we have so many things that we're able to do, so many marvels, that sometimes we lose the ability to be marvel, to look at something and be blown away by what happens. Today we celebrate an event that was the most marvelous event that the world had ever seen. And perhaps because of our intelligence, if we can call it that, because of our technological achievements, maybe it's become a little bit more difficult for us to be impressed. In fact, I would say that what we consider our growing intelligence provides us with a spiritual danger. We can do so much. There are things that we can do in medicine that are now almost routine that most recently we considered a miracle. Got one sitting right over here. And in our ability, we can do almost anything. Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament tells us this is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It was way back in the beginning of the story of God working with his people, back at the early parts of the book of Genesis, when the people were building the Tower of Babel. And the scriptures record God looking down at his people saying, look at what they do. When they work together, nothing will be impossible for them. And then God confused the tongues to remind us who was really in charge. And since then, we have gained and gained and gained knowledge. To the point now where, according to the world's wisdom, to believe in God is a stupid thing to do. Some in the scientific community would tell us that those of us that live by faith are unintelligent. We believe that, some of us believe that we are so enlightened that we would say that there is no God. But when Christ was born 2,000 years ago, it was not some miracle that led many to see what was going on. In fact, it wasn't really many, it was just a few that recognized what happened on that first Christmas. If we listen carefully to the words of the Troparian of this feast and the Nativity, it was those who were following science that learned through their knowledge to come to the source of knowledge. Listen to the words that we've already sung a few times this morning. Thy Nativity, O Christ our God, hath given rise to the light of knowledge in the world. For they that worship the stars did learn therefrom to worship thee, O Son of Justice, and to know that from the east of the highest thou didst come. O Lord, glory to thee. It was those magi, those wise men from the east, using the best of their academic knowledge that brought them to Christ. So how is it that in our day and age so many people are led away from God because of so-called knowledge? My brothers and sisters, this Christmas is about what is knowledge and what is ignorance. On this feast and this feast alone, there are two icons that are brought out to us. One we brought out last night at the, at the pre-feast, the icon of our Lord being born. Maybe people are wondering, what is this, this candle standing here? We don't normally have a candle there. Why is that there? It's there because it's the second icon of this feast. No paint, no wood, a single burning candle. The church says to put out as an icon 
An icon of what? An icon of the birth of Christ, who said, I am the light of the world. It is Christ, and only in Christ, do we find enlightenment. It is Christ, and only in Christ do we know anything. Do we have any kind of knowledge? And so it's not knowledge that leads us away from God. It is that which has always led people away from God. Arrogance. If those wise men had been arrogant, but not wise, they would have seen that star that the best of their science pointed to, and they would have said, there can't be another king somewhere over there. They would have overruled the rules of their science. But these were wise men. More than just smart, they were wise. And because they were wise, they followed truth wherever it led them. And that's the problem with our day and age. Many of those that call themselves scientists overrule their own rules of science and say there can't be a God. Show me the scientific proof that there is no God. That's the scientific method. But much of science and academia has fallen into not simply a lack of knowledge, but they've fallen into arrogance. You and I come together on this beautiful Christmas morning to honor and recognize the presence of the light. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. It's fine to know all kinds of things. It's good to learn. It's good because God puts all these things in the world, the good things for us to learn. He has laid out His creation like a beautiful puzzle for us to put together and understand. And every piece putting into that puzzle can lead us closer to the one who created it. Every color in the sky, every shape of the cloud, every molecule and every atom can lead us closer to the source of all of them. And so let's not make the mistake of so many in our day and age. Let's follow our knowledge wherever it leads us. And what we find is that to be truly wise, we have to be truly humble. Humble enough to follow the truth wherever it goes and not to stick with an agenda. Humble enough to say that we are not the creators of the world. We could look out on this beautiful creation. We can see all that God has placed before us and we can humble ourselves. The one who came into this world as the light of this world he himself, being the source of everything, he humbled himself to be born in a manger, in a stinking cave. If he was humble, if his humility led to our salvation, then our humility will do the same thing. So let's look at this world around us. Let's try to understand it. And let's see it as what it is. The creation of our God. If it's the creation, let's use it to seek the Creator. But let us also have, with our knowledge, humility. The humility that so much of this world lacks and the humility that's lacking that leads this world away from God. So full of what they think are knowledge and they find themselves ignorant. Ignorant of the truth and the joy that we come together to celebrate. Let us humble ourselves before this newborn king who humbled himself before us. In that humility, let it lead us toward the source of this good and loving God. Let us seek him, knowing that our way may not be the way. And so we follow his way. And if his way is humility, it must be our way as well. All of science and all the accumulation of all human knowledge can bring us facts, can bring us, in some sense, truths. 
but it cannot lead us to joy. So much of this world is left without joy because so much of this world is ignorant of the God who brings joy. So while we follow the truth and follow information, let us not stop there. But in our humility, follow God. As we come before Him today to worship Him, let us find the humility to see who He is. To see all that He brings us and all that this world could never bring us. And in that humility, see Him as the source of all that is joy. Truly joy to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.